Welcome back to Night Zero's Corner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the infamous Shonda Rhimes show, Scandal. I have a very love-hate relationship with many Shonda Land shows. They're absolutely addictive to watch, but they're also very, very frustrating to get through because they all share so many of the same issues. Scandal is no different. I started watching this show because another YouTuber whom I absolutely adore made their own review of it, and so I decided to give this show a go because I didn't want to be spoiled. I watched I watched Scandal for the first four or five seasons. Unfortunately, I couldn't finish it because shit just went so off the rails that I just had to check out. But for a while, this show was pretty good, and absolutely batshit crazy from start to end. Scandal tells the story of Olivia Pope, a former White House communications worker who, who starts her own crisis management firm. But while she has to help her clients get out of some insane and often very illegal situations, Olivia herself has quite the scandalous, aha, backstory herself because she's having an affair with the President of the United States. First character we're going to discuss is Olivia Pope. Um, I like Olivia. Well, I didn't like it a strong word. I respect Olivia because I love a good anti-hero and Olivia is a well-written anti-hero, but uh, sis kind of gets on my nerves. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, something that annoys me about Olivia is that she often tries to pretend as if, or she thinks of herself as a good person when she's really not. She's just like the lesser of many, 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 many evils in this show because there are a lot of absolutely batshit crazy characters in this show olivia is one of them she's like the least crazy out of she, she's not crazy but she's the least evil out of all of them and i respect her for that but she is still not a good person she's done many bad things in this show and um she is she can be kind of a hypocrite at times one scene one scene that i remember where is where she's talking to her ex-boyfriend i don't remember what this guy's name is he finds out that Olivia might have had an affair with the president. When he asks her about this, she gives this ridiculous monologue where we, the audience, know that she and Fitz are already having an affair. But um, she's like, she accuses her ex of lying when we, the audience, know that she's lying. So this whole monologue falls flat. Olivia gives a lot of monologues throughout the series. A lot of the characters do and... A lot of them don't really land right. There was one that she gives to the Spanish dictator back in season one, and it just, and it went on for like what, like two minutes. Like, girl, shut up. <laughs> this is a big problem. One of the, the um, one of the biggest issues with Scandal as a whole is the dialogue. Every one of these characters has almost every one of these characters has these long ass monologues. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. A lot of Olivia's falls falls flat, but um i forgot her uh, uh carrie washington carrie washington carries this show greatly she's a fan phenomenal actress and the way that she delivers the monologues later on in the series get a lot better so i guess i'll give her a pass now um as for her and fitz i don't know how i feel about these two as a couple they annoy me because the stuff that they do for each other is ridiculous i don't understand why fitz is so obsessed with her i don't understand why she's willing to risk and give up everything for fitz he ain't all that but um, they do have some pretty steamy scenes in the show, so I guess I'll praise them for that. Okay, next character is Abby. I couldn't stand Abby when I first met her. She was really mean. She was really snarky. Another problem I had with Shonda Rhimes shows that her characters are often giant assholes. Whenever like a character is supposed to be like snarky or like 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 funny, it, it always falls flat. They just come off as this rude asshole. They don't have the charisma or the charm, and Abby did not. She just came off as really mean to me. But then she got her hair changed in season two or three. And then she started working in the White House. And then she became my favorite character. It was crazy. I've never, like, that's good writing. That's good writing right there. Make It made me love a character I couldn't stand in a matter of, like, an episode or a few seasons. Um, One thing I have to praise Abby for is um, she is the only person in Fitz's inner circle that does not enable his childish-ass behavior. And, um, um, as for Abby and David, um, I don't like those two together. David, I'll get to David later, but Abby, I think she's better off single. I really do think that she is. That Leo guy, that annoying ass guy she dated later on in seasons, couldn't stand him either. They were good as a couple, but then they broke up and then Leo became annoying again. Uh, other than that, I love Abby. She's the best character. She's like the best character in the whole series. Okay, next character is oh boy next character is cyrus um he is kind of kind of the devil but i love it 
one thing I love about Scandal is that a lot of these characters are evil, but I respect it. Olivia's not evil, she's just morally gray, and I respect that. Cyrus, he is evil, but I respect that even more, because he knows who the fuck he is. He knows he's not a good person, and he owns that. I like that. Now, has Cyrus done some things that I will never defend, like killing that Amanda girl in the first season? Yeah, yeah, Cyrus has done some fucked up shit. Very fucked up shit, and there's a lot of shit that I will never, ever, ever defend. Also, something I won't defend, getting his husband killed and the way he treats his daughter. Okay, anyway, um, something that kind of baffles me about Cyrus is his loyalty to Fitz. I don't understand why he is so loyal to someone who treats him like absolute dog shit. Fitz is a menace. He acts like a child, and something I have to get on Cyrus for is that Cyrus is Fitz's worstest, worstest, worst enabler ever. Fitz acts like a child, and everybody in his inner circle enables his behavior. Cyrus is the worst. Like, he even refers to his job uh, working for Fitz as a babysitting job. Can you please call him out on his childish behavior or stop, like, doing things behind his back without telling him? Huh, can you, can you, Cyrus? I also gotta dig it on Melly for that, because she does that too, and so is Olivia. That's something I don't like, but Cy but let's focus on Cyrus. Cyrus is is a terrible enabler. I don't understand why he's so loyal to Fitz. I will never understand it. I don't really think the show actually gives an explanation for that. If they do, please please let me know. But other than that, I love Cyrus. He's evil and I love it. But um he uh he lets Fitz go. He does. He does. Okay, next character is the devil himself, Fitz. <laughs> Fitz is a menace. He acts like a three-year-old. He is so ridiculously childish. It is unreal. I can't stand this man. He And also, he's a horrible president. Like, he don't really do nothing. Cyrus, Melly, and Olivia, they doing his, they run, they're the real ones running this, running this country, not him. He just sits in the, in the White House, um, pounding his lip, stomping his feet, and trying to fuck Olivia. <laughs> it's so, it, it, uh, fits, he, First of all, Fitz is a cheater. He's cheating on Melly with Olivia, so so he's already an asshole for that. Something I, I really wish that Fitz should have gotten curb stomp for was he's cheating on Olivia with Melly, but when uh, Melly starts cheating back, Fitz, he slut shames her. What the hell was that? What the hell was that? No, seriously, somebody need to explain what the hell was that about because Fitz... Fitz is a horrible person. Just horrible. That makes no sense. And also, did I mention that he did this while Olivia was living in the White House with him? He moved his mistress into his, into the White House, but he dig, dig it, dug in on his wife for having an affair with another man. Wow. A toddler and a hypocrite. Just, ooh, ooh. And also, um... Let's talk about Fitz and Olivia. Let's, let's get a little more into Fitz and Olivia. Um... I don't understand, like, I understand that Fitz is in love with Olivia, but this man takes simping to another level. He literally bombed the Middle East because Olivia, he was tricked into thinking Olivia got kidnapped. <sighs> he went to war for Olivia. He started an actual war for Olivia you know usually grand displays of like love make me swoon but this was just dumb Fitz is so dumb he is so how did he not get impeached that's that's what I'm wondering how did he not get impeached he was in that office until Melly kicked his ass out <laughs> and I'm glad she did um Melly deserved to be president she was a much better president than Fitz was um, but other than that, Fitz sucks. He sucks. He has some steamy scenes with Olivia, but he is an embarrassing simp. He's an overgrown toddler. He's a hypocrite. He's a horrible president, and he's a horrible husband. The next character is Jake. Um, I absolutely, absolutely adored Jake when he first came um on the scene. I was seriously team Jake and Olivia for a very long time, but then... Jake became the head of B613, and then I started to despise him. Well, first of all, um, he killed Cyrus's husband. I love Cyrus's husband. Um, and he killed off one of my favorite characters because 
I don't know why. I think I think his, his um Cyrus's husband he just found out too much, and Jake had to get rid of him. So I understand that because you know B six thirteen it's 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 um. What what were they? Were they just an assassin organization? I forgot what they were, but um, I don't think you have to keep this place top secret. But that was uh, Jake pissed me off with that. I had to understand. He is yet another simp for Olivia, but he doesn't take simp into the level of uh, Fitz because a he's not the president. But um, I like how he's willing to do anything for Olivia, but he's not like gonna start a war in another nation for Olivia because he's not well Jake is a walking puppet okay he has been through a lot of trauma because of because of Olivia's father and I understand that like he's trained to like always do what he's told like his brain is broken because Eli Pope destroyed him just like he did to Huck but um that's why he acts the way that he does so I understand that that he's been severely traumatized but Jake he really, really, really pissed me off when he became the head of B613. But then he stepped down from his position or he got fired. I don't remember. But um, then I started to love him again. I'm Team Olivia and Jake. I think I am. Okay, next character is Quinn. Quinn is annoying as hell. <laughs> annoying as hell. I didn't like when, in season one, when Quinn was falsely <clears throat> falsely accused, sorry, falsely accused of um committing a terrorist attack. That was wild. <laughs> and Abby... Kept calling her by her old name, Lindsay. Abby got on my nerves with this because I was like, Abby, you are you seriously going to tell me that you believe that Queen committed a terrorist attack? I know you don't know this woman, but does she look like the type of person who would do something like that? No. No. Queen is a very in the beginning was I want I don't want to say weak willed, but she seemed like she doesn't know a lot of stuff because she doesn't. Because she doesn't. She was roped into this mess because of Olivia and Puck. And uh, um, I forgot what that best senator who who actually did commit that terrorist attack. That guy, I, I don't know what his name was, but um, Quinn's life was pretty pretty um chaotic as we first uh met her. She was thrown to chaos. It was it was really sad. But then Quinn's character took a turn for the worse because they decided to make her a fucking assassin. Quinn's little B six thirteen era was. <laughs> was one of the worst things I've ever witnessed in my life. Though I did like her relationship with Charlie, her relationship, if you can even call it that, with with Huck. Oh my God, my eyes. That scene where they were caught having sex in Olivia's office, I wanted to throw up. I was about to vomit all over my bedroom floor. That was horrific. Thick. What? Whose decision was that? Mm, whose? Whose? That was. I already didn't like Quinn. I just felt bad for her. But then they made her a freaking terrorist, and I was like, and then she just started killing people all willy nilly. It was. It was a kind of funny at first because I. I don't know. I, I can't imagine seeing Queen kill a bunch of people was funny because it just didn't make any sense. But then she became a full-on terrorist, started sleeping with Huck, and it was just, ugh. Ugh, it was nasty. It was, it was disgusting. I like her and Huck as friends. They have a nice friendship. But, um, them dating was that... You know, let's just move on before I vomit. <laughs> let's just move on, please. Okay, um... Let's get her as Huck. I loved Huck in the beginning. I absolutely adored him. He was very strange. He was very weird. But then I got to learn his backstory and um, I started to fear for my life because um, Daddy Pope unfortunately broke him too and Huck became a menace and I had to understand because he just started he can't when once he tr once he's told to kill somebody he can't stop himself and I understand that Daddy Pope is to blame for that because he broke him just like he broke Jake. But um, Huck started to scare me. Honestly, he really did. He started to scare me. And um, I had to understand as well because Lord, when he killed Lena Dunham, Lena Dunham's character, and then he killed that bus full of people. What the fuck, Huck? Like, damn. He just became so destructive so nasty it was ooh, ooh, ooh. okay I, I need to move on next character is Melly 
my heart goes out to Melly. She has been through so much shit. It is unreal. She was literally this show's punching bag. Let me just tell you some of the bad stuff that she went through. First of all, her husband, her husband cheats on her with one of their employees, Olivia, and their affair becomes public and she becomes dragged. She gets through, Melly gets dragged through the media because, you know, misogyny. She gets blamed for her husband cheating on her. And then Fitz moves Olivia into the White House. Then Melly's kids start to resent her. Um, Melly has an affair with this guy named Andrew, who's friends with Fitz and also works for Fitz. And then Fitz punches Andrew in the face. Slut shanks Melly and then has Olivia force Andrew to break up with Melly, leaving her alone again. While Fitz has his mistress living in their house. Then we find out that Melly was sexually assaulted by Fitz's father. And she thought her son, her eldest son, was her attacker's son. But it turns out it wasn't. She And she only finds out who her son's true father is after her son gets murdered by Olivia's father. <sighs> Cheated on, sexually assaulted, law had her saw her son get murdered, publicly humiliated. It it, it Millie Melly has just been through too much, too much. One thing I like about Millie is that she's very very clever. Um, she also enables Fitz, but she's not afraid to like beat Fitz at his own game. That scene where she induced the labor of her baby was so funny because that was so crazy. <laughs> it these characters, they do so much crazy shit. And Melly is one of them. Um, after everything Melly has been through, she deserved to become the freaking president of the United States. I'm so proud of her. Her next character is David. David is so boring. He's like duller than dishwater. In the beginning, I felt pity towards David because Olivia kept screwing him over and lying to his face and getting him in trouble. Um, But then David started dating Abby and I liked those two together. But then Olivia broke them up. I didn't like what she did that and how she broke them up. Now, that was just sick because she literally re-traumatized Abby again by doing that. I didn't like that. But um, David became kind of interesting when he was only when he was with Abby. <laughs> but then he broke up with that. But then he and Abby broke up. They had this weird little on-off thing. And then David started to piss me off because this buffoon decided to go after B six thirteen after everybody told him that he cannot do that. There is no taking down B six thirteen. He was reminded of that like five hundred times, and yet he still tried to take them to court and he lost the court case made a fool of himself the jurors got murdered and he just he just didn't stop until that disaster happened <sighs> okay next character is Harrison um I liked Harrison a lot unfortunately the actor who played him was a piece of human garbage so Harrison got killed off because the actor got fired um I loved Harrison uh his unchained loyalty towards Olivia was interesting but it kind of annoyed me at times like I understand she got him out of jail <clears throat> she got him out of jail but um not really much to say about Harrison except that his death was really really sad okay last character kind of the best character in the series daddy pope a living legend he is the only character in this show who can give a good monologue and not bore me to tears the monologues in this show sometimes they go on for so long that they become downright comedic. I'm just sitting there like, are you like you still talking? <laughs> but I never, I never did that with Daddy Pope. Like this man, this actor, he's acting down. He is so charismatic. Just like Cyrus, he's evil as hell, but he is like a thousand times more evil than Cyrus. But I love him even more than Cyrus. That's crazy. Um, Eli Pope is the devil. If we're being real, Cyrus, he's Lucifer. Daddy Pope is the devil. He's he's the big daddy. He's Satan. He is so evil. Like he murdered a child. He's an assassin. And um he loves Olivia, but at the same time, he treats her like shit. Um Daddy Pope, he does a lot of wrong in my eyes, and I don't condone it, but I respect it. I think he he and Abby are my favorite characters. 
I really do. I, I can't say I love him. Can I? Do I love him? You know what? I do. I do love Daddy Pope. I do. He can maybe one day teach his daughter to give a good monologue. But until that, until that happens, um, Daddy Pope, he the best character in the, in the show. Sorry. Well, that does it for this video. Scandal is currently on Hulu and I suggest that you watch it. It may have a lot of issues and some questionable writing choices, but it'll definitely keep you hooked with its absolutely insane writing and many, 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 many plot twists. Because this show ain't called Scandal for no reason. <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye!